My speech tonight uh, is on impromptu speaking. And uh, spe it's public speaking is, as a discipline. More often than not, it's rated higher on the list of things to be scared about than things such as death or major illness or things like that. So being able to speak largely off the cuff or, or, or otherwise just improvised tends to aggravate these fears even more so simply because people largely, one, don't know how to speak publicly well, and two, how to do it off the cuff in such a way that they're, you know, they can actually cogently make a message. So what I'm going to speak now tonight on some, some advice that Toastmasters International uh, published in the Better Speaker series. And one reason I like the speech is because of the, probably because of the irony of it, because you gave me a prepared speech on improvised speaking. Mm -hmm. And which seems a little at odds, but you know, if you end up doing it right, you can actually give this speech off the cuff just as well as any other prepared speech. <coughs> so to start, what exactly is an impromptu speaking? And that actually doesn't show up as well as I was hoping, but there were. But um, impromptu speaking, improvisational speaking, what have you, is basically being able to talk and cobble together a speech at the last, either at the last minute and, pre and present, present it well, or um, expecting the possibility of being able to uh, have to speak, but then but not knowing whether or not you're actually going to have to. So, for example, like if, you're, if you go into to a convention for your profession, let's say, you know that you, you catch wind of there's a possibility that you might have to give a speech because of the conflict with another with a prepared role, prepared planned speaker, but you don't know until the last minute of whether or not you actually going to have to be there. So you're preparing the speech that you might have to give, but you might not, but you don't know whether or not you're going to have to. That essentially boils down to an impromptu speech simply because you don't know whether you're going to have to speak beforehand. And you're probably not going to be able to do much research on your audience as one of prepared speakers will. So to move on from here, Toastmasters recommends the five-point formula. And this cat here illustrates the fact that most people hate public speaking more than death. In fact, they probably wish they were dead such as what this cat is looking like is, and, and, and over being able to present, prevent or speak publicly and, and such. So to start, you have to be able to actually listen to what any, any speakers before you were saying, or things the audience have said before you take the stage, both as a way to gauge the room, but also to be able to incorporates any ideas you catch from the audience or from other speakers or such into, into your presentation. The reason why this is useful is because the more information you're able to get beforehand, the, the easier your presentation is going to be because you know what, what to expect more than if you're going in completely and utterly cold. Toastmasters also recommends that once you're um, shortly before you speak, take, take a moment to kind of pause and relax, gather your thoughts, because not having the opportunity to prepare and practice where you're going to say which points on the stage and what you, exactly what you're going to say, when and how, you need to, you need, you need to essentially buy yourself some time with being able to take, those, take a little bit of a pause. From there, in your head, kind of confirm what you're going to say in the order in which you're going to say, um, say it, and also how you're going to say it. So that way, when you actually finally start speaking, you're able to present what you're going to say well. So that way, people are would actually be able to one 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 listen to you, but and two, be able to actually understand what you're trying to say. Next, you know, after all this, this is when you actually finally start talking. And you say you say your your two cents and go from there. Um, 
the section, you know, one, one thing that's actually kind of interesting is uh, Winston Churchill, one of the, uh, you know, the Prime Minister of England during World War II, um, and one of the 20th century's great orators, he once said that the longer the speech he was going to give, the less time he actually spent preparing for. Because like, he would spend days preparing for like a five minute speech, but maybe five minutes preparing for an hour long speech, simply because the, the, you know, the, way, the, the way he ended up being prepared for something like that is required, you know, requires a different skills and if anything actually requires a little more extemporaneous skills to be able to speak for an hour or 45 minutes or something like that. But then once you actually get and end up getting your story or your information across, that's when you end up finally wrapping up the speech, hopefully sooner rather than later, later simply because mo uh, when most people end up speaking off the cuff, they have a habit of uh, Rambling a little bit, so you know, and you know those first three steps are going to help you help you not ramble and that can make you make your point a little more fluidly. So that when you get your point across, you can just end it right there and call it good. Next up, picking the strategy. When I'm nervous, I have a habit of getting sarcastic. Don't do this during during a property speech because it's hard enough already. Try to get your point across. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna try try not to get over, overly involved with what was the audience in this way. So, the easiest way to do this is express an opinion, because one of the uh, one of the easiest ways to give a, a speech off the cuff is to state an opinion and then back it up and then back it up with information you haven't already known. This is, uh, you know, like for example, most of you know, as you all know, most of the speeches I give here at Toastmasters are more or less off the cuff, and a lot of the speeches I give are essentially, uh, well, not essentially, they are on topics I already know a lot about because it requires less uh, less preparation, and it's able, to, I'm able to get more of a stream of consciousness kind of going in order to get that. And opinions are nice and easy, are nice easy ways to be able to get. Get, get get that going. Additionally, you can try caught, um, uh, address the cause and effect. So, like you, you know, you have your you, you, you're going to have your subject <coughs> going into presentation. And if you have that subject, you can have like you can you can be able to say if this happens, then if what well, effects happens, then Y follows. If Y follows, then Z follows after that. It gives you a clear pathway of being able to go from point to point to point, and then wrap it, and then being able to wrap it all up in the end. Um, alternatively, discussing the components of the topic is another really easy way to cobble the speech together at the last minute. Simply because you can look at you know you look at the subject, you're able to you know, kind of break it down a little bit, and you talk and you talk each point individually. And hopefully, be able to wrap it all together at the end as a way to kind of conclude it. Um, lastly, Toastmasters also like to recommend you talk about past, present, and future because if you know what happened before, you know what's going on now, it's fairly easy to connect those two and then provide some conjecture on what may happen in the future as a way to conclude the speech and wrap things up. Next up, three points. My whole point here with this, <coughs> this man here has run for president past couple of elections. His, uh, the name he has been running under is Vermin Supreme. And this little hat here you see him wearing, that is not actually a hat. That is a rubber boot. <laughs> so the way, the, way I, the, way, the way I see it, if you can get enough confidence and enough sincerity in your message that you can go speak to a group of people with a beard, with a beard that looks like that while wearing a rubber boot on your head, you're good to go. <laughs> so the way, the way I see it, you know, you know, when it comes to confidence, at least, a lot of people will say, um, you know, fake it till you make it, and as cliche as that, as that is, there is some truth to that. So 
if you can if you can fake the confidence at least initially, the real confidence will come down the road, and you'll, you'll eventually be able to feed off that real confidence once it starts to kick in. My um, second point here, brevity. That's my um, that is a favorite word of mine. I say that because you know when, when it comes to communication, I've always been on the shorter side of saying things. Because the way the way I say I say if you can say something in five minutes instead of fifteen minutes, then take the five minutes to say it. Because one, it gives you less time to mess up, but also it gives you um, your audience be they a room full of people you're giving a speech to, or a bunch of people that happen to stumble across your blog, or a bunch of people reading an article you wrote in the newspaper. They all have a variety of other things they could be doing instead of consuming the message you're trying to convey. So being able to take, um, convey that message quickly, um, one, is considered their time, but also it gives you le mo more room to get, get your message across the phone because being able to cobble together a speech at the last minute is easier if you're looking at, say, five to ten minutes versus trying to fill up an hour's worth of time. And lastly, Toastmasters is really um, speaking on the same area, but sincerity is important when it comes to an impromptu speech simply because you 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 didn't you didn't have the you know, again you didn't have the time to actually prepare, so you didn't have the time to say exactly which emotions you want to be able to convey at which points. So you have to be able to be sincere in your message right off the bat and maintain that throughout. So, so, and plus, I mean, it also makes your speech a little bit more believable, a little bit more entertaining, and your audience will generally take it a little bit more seriously if if they see that you're sincere from the get-go. And plus, that sincerity also feeds into your confidence level, which in turn makes it you more comfortable on stage, which means you, you're you'd be big be a better speaker overall down the road. So with that, that is the presentation that is Postmasters is written. Since I still have some extra time here, I'd maybe like to open up for the, any questions that anyone has that I can maybe pr at least pretend to answer. Yeah. You're doing this from the Better Speaker series. Correct. Can you tell us what the Better Speaker series is and why and how the relationship between your speech and Yes, so the, the Better Speaker series is a um, collection of canned speeches that were that were written by Toastmasters International, and they, they actually you can while well, you can order physical copies of each individual speech, you can actually download them, like PDF like PDFs of it uh, for free off off our website. But the relationship between this presentation versus what Toastmasters um, published. Like, all the information is the same, but the PowerPoint was one of my own creation because one thing a lot of people realize very early on with, uh, with the speeches that Toastmasters writes themselves, and such as the Better Speaker series, is that they get very, very dry very, very quickly. So, you know, I like creating my own PowerPoints for these speeches ahead of time as a way to at least it's time to inject a little bit of humor and, and lightheartedness into an otherwise very dry, boring speech. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, we're talking about um, the three points in terms of why and the gravity. But in the meantime, you can see our post mountain magazines in the time that they talk about the you know, make your speech more attractive, you know, add a story, you know, you know. And I feel like when there's a difference between men and women, mm -hmm. I know the guy, they talk about the same. They say, oh yeah, there's a wedding. That. But then the woman you know, will say, uh, you know, what do they wear? And then, you know, more shut mm -hmm. up. And then, you know, lots of descriptions. That makes it more vivid. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying, hmm, sometimes, should I make it a little short? Yeah. <laughs> right? 